Yep. Can we now start? So we can start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. You just give me the okay and then I'll start. Yeah, son. Can do this. <laughs> so, hello to everybody. Thanks for your patience. So, we are running out of time actually. <laughs> so, we'll see how many minutes I still have. So, uh, thank you so much for this very nice uh, and kind introduction. Um, I will. Uh, briefly uh, introduce uh, Azadi Chronica and I will also give you an insight into what I'm doing there. And I have some examples, as I'm not an audio expert, we'll see <laughs> if this yeah, let, let will not be. No. <laughs> he is the expert in, in audio. <laughs> Thank you so much. Perfect. So. Can I start with the presentation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. That's good. Oh, it's wrong. Yeah. Fine. Yes. Yeah, the 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 topic is as electronic or a brief introduction, then I will uh, talk about uh, the symposium expanded animation within As Electronica, and uh, I will finally give you two examples that are, uh, for, for me, current examples in this discussion of tectonic shift. It's not only about uh, uh, expand the frame uh, and uh, the, the presentation of animation, uh, I will also um, would like to introduce animation, thinking about uh, tools that will do our animation in the future, maybe. So this is probably something that we will tackle in the future. So a brief introduction to myself. Uh, uh, I will just add that I had this privilege to be a part of Ars Electronica uh, in the 90s, and I had this uh, a great privilege to get into computer animation. And this is uh, in the fourth ground, uh, Denson Dean, who is a uh, pioneer in virtual reality. So he invented at the beginning of the 90s uh, a VR system, and we had this privilege to get this equipment and to work with his devices a couple of years. So this was my first step uh, into animation, uh, designing uh, environments for, for virtual environments. And then I continued uh, working uh, at different uh, departments at Ars Electronica. Uh, and what is Ars Electronica actually? It is um, a big institution in Austria, in the center uh, of Austria between Vienna and Salzburg. I think you all know Salzburg and Vienna, but Linz is not that famous. It has a uh, uh, a big history in media art, but it's not that famous compared to, to Vienna. It's also a little bit smaller. Um, and they had this idea in the late 70s uh, with uh, a new identity for the city. So there was no uh, Mozart uh, and no uh, Klimt and Schiele uh, involved uh, in this city. Uh, and so they came up with this idea. So we need a cultural identity, the festival in media arts could be a nice idea. And this was actually the starting point for the first media art festival worldwide. So the first festival started 42 years ago in 1979. And then this idea evolved like Sinanima with this huge history of 45 years. Uh, and then they hosted an international competition, the Prias Electronica. Then they built a museum. They got a lot of money and they had this possibility to establish a museum. And then in 2009, um, this Linz was the, the capital, capital, uh, cultural capital city of Europe. And so they could extend the museum. 
And then um, they also established a research facility. So uh, I actually started at uh, the research facility with this pioneer, for instance, Dan Dean. It's called Future Lab, so thinking about um, technologies in the future. And there is also um, a national category for um, young artists that's called uh, Create Your World, a festival inside the Media Art Festival that is dedicated to young people. So this is probably also very interesting for you. And another division is uh, called export, so collaborations with uh, other cultural institutions worldwide. And this is uh, uh, also another subdivision. Solutions is a, a division that is connected to the industry, so applied research, so to speak. And there is, since a couple of years, also a connection to the Japanese Media Art Festival that is also one of the oldest ones. Uh, here you can see a couple of images of the Ars Electronica Center subtitle Museum of the Future. Uh, and we have all this privilege that this is not, that the, this exhibitions are constantly updated. So if you have this, the possibility to go there, you will probably see a totally different exhibition that we are now showing. So uh, there is always a change, especially at the festival. So we invite people, uh, artists worldwide to exhibit there. And this is also a place where you can actually interact with these pieces. So from game installations, interactive installations. So you are cordially invited to get in touch with the media art uh, interfaces. Uh, and there is, for instance, in a museum, so this is uh, um, the, the beautiful Danube that is uh, splitting up our city into pieces. What you see here is so to speak, uh, um, one of our prime examples at the Ars Electronica Center, it's called Deep Space 8K, and this was um, opened in uh, 2009 and extended to uh, an 8K environment in 2015. What you see here is a, a similar setting like we are now here in Svenju maybe a little bit bigger. And we have uh, an 8K front projection and also bottom proje projection with a lot of technology in it. So for instance, we have some laser ranger technology in the corners, and then uh, you can physically track a lot of people. I had this privilege to, to see some uh, uh, um, students dancing before this talk. And with this technology, for instance, we can uh, capture the movement of a lot of people, not just two or three, up to 30 people. And these are um, possibilities for interactive environments, so to speak. Also, uh, 3D projections, etc. So this is just an insight. And what we are actually are doing is uh, a lot of collaborations with artists uh, to invite them uh, to de develop um, projects for the deep space. And so this is a kind of um, an evolving playground for a lot of artists, not only for animators, also for scientists. Uh, we can also add uh, um, um, different devices, music, uh, uh, performances, etc. So this is one, uh, or this is probably the prime example at Ars Electronica Center. This is an overview of the festival. So it started as a very small festival with probably 20 people. Um, I, I was not involved at the beginning, uh, but then uh, they came up with this idea that there could be an overarching topic that we will that they have tackled every year. So since 1986, there is a kind of a, a topic every year, for instance, out of control, or they also discussed uh, at the beginning of the 90s the possibilities of virtual reality. And then uh, 15 years later again, because uh, it was uh, a hot topic again. Uh, and I will just give you a short uh, insight into the topics. For instance, we came up with this idea in 2017 with artificial intelligence. And we discussed how artificial intelligence on the one hand influences the society, but also 
the way how we uh, probably work together and how this also influence artistic processes. Another topic was out of the box uh, in 2019. So this was the celebration of the 40th uh, anniversary of Ars Electronica. So thinking about out of the box in many um, divisions. So and, and the pillars of Ars Electronica are uh, art, technology and society. So it's always, of course, reflecting the impact of artistic work and society and vice versa. So for instance, uh, in 2020, we had, of course, uh, this uh, challenge, this big challenge to collaborate with uh, 150 partners worldwide uh, in this uh, very challenging circumstances. And we came up with the idea, so the artistic director, Gerfried Stocker, uh, came up with this idea to, to do this as, as a big, uh, um, online uh, gaming party, so to speak, uh, to connect all these uh, collaborators virtually. This year, uh, and the festival is in September, so it's uh, quite fresh to me. Uh, the topic was uh, um, uh, New Deal, as we are discussing in Europe and worldwide, uh, Green Deal, uh, etc. So we tackled the topic of what new deals we need in this context of using technology in the future. So, and these are, uh, so to speak, um, um, elements. I have to stop this actually, because when I uh, entered uh, your school, I saw uh, this Nike uh, Samutrake at the entrance, and uh, this is actually the the Oscar, so to speak, the trophy that we are awarding for media art. So we call it uh, the Golden Nike. Mika from Samutrake, uh, and so this this is, um, so to speak, uh, uh, the Oscars for media arts, the international competition, Prias Electronica, uh, and we have this privilege to, yeah, uh, um, every year there is this call and we can uh, invite experts and we can uh, uh, tackle the topic, what is actually fresh and new uh, in this field of media art. And these are, I think, the winners from 2015. And on the left side, left side it's uh, Leopold Seda, who was actually one of the founders of Ars Electronica in the 70s. He unfortunately uh, died uh, at the beginning of this year. And on the other hand, it's Gerfried Stocker, the current artistic director of, of the festival. So just a couple of more impressions about the Prias Electronica. So, uh, and this is quite interesting. Uh, so what is actually media art? Uh, the competition is a quite good answer because we have a lot of different categories and I will show you uh, these categories a little bit later. So they came up with this idea in uh, 1987 to award Oscars in the media art and with a, a traditional or with roots to traditional art forms like painting, filmmaking, so to speak, and music. And they just thought about, okay, let's do digital filmmaking, um, computer music, uh, computer graphics. And these were the first categories uh, in, in the mid 80s. Um, the first winners, so to speak, I think you all know John Lasseter. He was, so to speak, the first Golden Nico winner in the category computer animation. And at the beginning, it was, of course, very important to tackle all these pioneers, uh, all these connections to computer graphics uh, and the evolution of uh, computer technology. Uh, and what you see here, I think it's very small. Can I maybe zoom in? Let me see if I know the right, this is not possible in this setting. I will briefly uh, introduce you this graphic. So computer graphics, computer animation, that's the orange uh, uh, ribbon, and computer music are the starting point for Prias Electronica. And in the 90s, the beginning of the 90s, they came up with this idea 
that all these digital images are getting more and more interactive. For instance, with virtual reality, but also with uh, a lot of interfaces that came up in the 90s. So interactive art, interactive installations is one category. Actually started in 1991 with the first winner. Uh, and you can see that this ribbon is going on and is still one category at Ars Electronica. And of course, in the mid 90s, uh, we tackled the topic uh, World Wide Web, net communities, uh, digital communities, uh, how um, media artists work with uh, collaborations, digital communities. Uh, a little bit later, they came up with this idea of uh, hybrid art, bringing uh, many disciplines together, like uh, scientists, physics, and also artists. So with this topic of hybridity in media arts, science, and technology. And what is quite interesting, in the last year, we started a new category called artificial intelligence, since there was a, a topic at Ars Electronica in 2017, this was the starting point for the category artificial intelligence. And you can see also some uh, other categories like uh, create a world, which is dedicated uh, to, to youngsters. And this is uh, an, the kind of evolution. And I don't know which new categories will evolve in, in the future. And this is the dynamic, um, so to speak, uh, international competition of us electronic. Now, I will mainly talk about animation, as, as you are experts already in animation. And this is, so to speak, one of the pioneers you all know, Laxa Jr. Another winner is uh, Peter Weibel. And this is a person you probably not know, but he is a representative of uh, expanded cinema, a movement, uh, an art movement. Uh, that was tackling new technology in the art world. And he also uh, started to do some animations, but as you can see here, uh, abstract animation. And this was always, so I will go back, uh, a vivid discussion between, so there are pioneers, there are experts and outstanding uh, pieces in the industry, but there is also uh, an artistic approach. And at the beginning of this category, there was uh, this idea to, to, to be open for everything, for all the activities in the field of computer animation. For instance, A Broken Heart by John Stavely was a Golden Nico winner at the third edition, female uh, computer artist. And if you are interested in diversity and you will have this possibility uh, to to do research in the field of media art, uh, you will probably find uh, John Stavely in, in your research as well. So what he was doing, uh, like uh, tackling uh, uh, disease, uh, bulimia with computer animation. But we also have some, some pioneering works like uh, the Abyss. So I, I, I'm not sure if you know that, but this is it's really uh, an outstanding uh, uh, visual effects piece by um, major studio ILM that was also one of the winners in this category. So visual effects was very important at the beginning of the 90s. I always um, uh, talk about uh, Carl Sims because he is for me a prime example as he is a software developer and an artist as well. So he is in this field of procedural animation, so generating uh, structures, evolving uh, structures, for instance. And so if you are familiar with uh, 3D computer animation, uh, you probably know how to generate particle systems or procedural structures. And he is one of these pioneers, uh, software developer, but also an artist who was using that. So uh, I don't have time uh, to, to talk about all these pioneers. This is an, a big overview of the top prize winners, but it sums up what I'm already tackled. So we have uh, Pixar as pioneering work, ILM and other studios that you probably know. 
with pioneering visual effects work in this field. But we also have independent artistic approaches from abstract pieces to narrative ones in our history. And since I'm involved in Prias Electronica, since 2008, we, we see that, um, of course, computer animation, and I think you, you will agree, uh, is not um, a topic for its own anymore, because you will probably do a lot of animation that are analog and digital at the same time. And all every animation, if it's analog or digital, at the end is in in any way be digitally manipulated, so to speak. Yeah? Thinking about hand-drawn animation, then it's recorded and there is sound and there is also uh, maybe a finishing a visual effects uh, digital manipulated. So this is a topic that of course was uh, facing our uh, strategy for the future and we thought okay it's it's open and uh, what we are very interested in are of course the artistic approaches. So since 15-20 years we are no more interested in pioneering computer graphics works, not in, in industry, in, not in, in uh, big studios anymore. And so since 2008, you see a lot of more artistic work. And even, and this was the idea, to expand animation in this field of media art, thinking about all these interactive pieces, game installations, these are also animations, so to speak. And if you are uh, familiar with computer games, I don't know if you have ever played one, but there is a lot of animation in it. So you have cinematics, uh, you have a, a lot of possibilities. You can also generate uh, animation with uh, game engines. So the boundaries between interactive and non-interactive or sequential or whatever, or just time-based media, of course, are blurry. So there are a lot of examples. And one example that is for me um, kind of very important when I'm looking back is 2008, I was on jury and we awarded computer animation Golden Nika to Madame Tutli Putli. And this is a stop motion piece with a lot of innovative ways in uh, digital manipulation. What you see here, maybe you know this piece, uh, this is a traditional stop motion animation, but with a combination of live action elements. So with the eyes that were manipulated or projected onto the stop motion animation. So at the end, a prime example for this kind of blurring boundaries between digital and analog animation. Expanded animation is much more than this blurring boundaries. It is about installations, and this is a natural selection of pieces that are more uh, in this field of projection mapping. So you see, for instance, uh, Under and Elias is a projection mapping a narrative piece uh, that is projected on media facades. It is also about interactive pieces like uh, uh, Temp Mort, for instance, where you have this possibility to interact with your smartphone with uh, digital images. And now they are uh, talking to you. They are uh, becoming, uh, uh, getting to life, so to speak. Uh, and there, for instance, are some examples in this field of uh, virtual reality storytelling or these interesting intersections with uh, game art, for instance. David O'Reilly is one of the uh, pioneers in this field that is also doing animation and games at the same time with, with one piece. So, expanded animation, uh, a short introduction, and uh, this is quite interesting as we have uh, this pioneer, uh, Stan van der Beek, in the front, and in the back, you see the so-called movie drone, and this was his idea. He actually coined the term expanded cinema. And he came up with this idea that uh, it's, it could be much more than just a screen that we have here. It could be a projection, it could be 360 degree projection. 
what you see here in the movie drone. And you can also think about uh, performances, uh, theater, uh, bringing this media together. So this was kind of the starting point. Expanded cinema was uh, discussed from many perspectives, but one of our heroes in the field is uh, uh, Jin Youngblood, who um, published this book with a lot of different approaches. And he also tackled in 1970 all these elements with uh, or possibilities with uh, digital animation and computer animation. As Electronica in the 80s tackled this topic, expanded cinema, digital images, and they came up with this idea to invite people from the industry. So what you see here is Ray Elby Smith, who is a pioneer in computer graphics. ILM uh, is, he was heavily involved in ILM, for instance, but we also invited uh, Nam Chung Paik as an artist to discuss this from very different approaches. And with this idea of bringing experts from the industry of research, artists together and hosting conferences, for instance, the Sky Art Conference was one of these conferences in the 80s where they discussed uh, computer animation uh, and they exhibited pieces on the fringes of computer animation. Like, for instance, uh, this uh, installation by Bernd Krake with these many uh, TV screens. And this was our idea with the Expanded Animation Symposium to use the deep space to invite artists to develop uh, projects in this very nice setting, to invite uh, scientists, researchers, from different uh, areas and discuss this from uh, various perspectives. And we had, uh, we started with this topic mapping an unlimited landscape as it is, um, so to speak, uh, for us expanding animation unlimited when you are tackling these fringes. And every year we came up with a new topic and we came also, this is the last topic tectonic shift, so mapping the landscape. And now we think there is a tectonic shift. There is um, um, something changing, a paradigmatic shift. So if, if, if yeah, uh, this, this is a topic that we discussed. Very brief um, uh, introduction. So we invited, for instance, uh, Susan Bakken. She is a uh, uh, she just published uh, in, in 2013 uh, the book Pervasive Animation, a scholar, but also, for instance, uh, Mimo Acton Quayola, upcoming pioneers or upcoming uh, uh, media artists, and now they are very famous in this field. For instance, uh, um, uh, Mimo Acton is uh, very active in artificial intelligence and media art. So. A year later, we tackled the topic uh, play and playful environments. Uh, we came up with this idea of uh, subversive strategies with technology using uh, new technology for animation. Um, I will not explain every uh, topic, but just to give you uh, an insight, for instance, in 2018, we talked about these new interfaces. Uh, using, for instance, virtual reality as an animation tool set. So Tilt Brush, for instance, I think you know where you can create uh, uh, 3D paintings uh, in virtual reality, for instance. This was just one topic. Or uh, virtual production is also a quite interesting approach uh, in this visual effects um, uh, setting in the future. Uh, and then we had this privilege to reflect on this many editions. And we had this privilege to publish the book in 2019, Expanded Animation Mapping and Unlimited Landscape. So if you are interested in, just let me know. The book is online and you can just uh, 
read it. Of course, you can buy it on, on Amazon or wherever you will find it. Uh, and this was the idea of the book. So uh, as you can see here, we have invited scholars, but also uh, artists. And we have uh, a kind of a selection of pieces that give an answer. So if someone asks me, what is the expanded animation? So in this book, you will find roughly 40 projects that are for me prime examples. So this is what we actually did. And this is an early example in the history of the Prias Electronica from 2011, an uh, audiovisual installation, as you can see here, an extended uh, format. This is an example by uh, semiconductors, an installation that is a prime example for a collaboration between researchers and artists. So semiconductors actually worked with uh, scientists that are observing our solar system. And with this research data, they generated uh, black rain and they discussed about uh, how we handle research data in the public. Yeah. And this is quite interesting. When artists and researchers are working together, then there is a kind of interaction. And uh, um, the researchers, in this case, usually um, um, manipulated the data because there is a lot of noise and they took the noise out of the images so that they thought, okay, it, it's better to use a clean, crisp uh, image in the scientific community to talk about that. And semiconductor, they, they were very interested in the noise that was uh, in this scientific data. And they visualized, as you can see here, this noise. And they thought about, okay, this is quite interesting. And after this collaboration, the scientists didn't reduce the noise anymore of these images. So just one example. And this is a, a, a three-channel installation of a project. Uh, this is an, a, an example where you can actually interact with images. So I think he, here you see this installation, an animated uh, tableau, so to speak, and you can interact with the mobile phone. You can uh, call them and can talk to the people. This is also quite interesting project on the fringes. This is uh, Goland Levin, and he is uh, one of these artists that has submitted to many categories. So he uh, got awards in the digital community category. He got awards uh, in computer animation, but also interactive. And what he actually did here is this is a black box a real-time manipulation. And you can just put your fingers, your hand into a black box, and you can in real-time distort your fingers. And you can get this feeling of that your body is distorted. And this is a very, very uncanny experience. Is it animation? It, of course, it is animation. It's real-time animation. The same thing with uh, uh, Everything by um, David O'Reilly. It's an animation, but it was generated uh, with his uh, uh, game engine. And so there is a game, and there is also an animation that he submitted to us Electronic. This is an, another example to expand the screen, light barrier, is a huge screen with very small elements. You can uh, show uh, images, projection mappings. This is another example in this field of uh, stereoscopy, how to use stereoscopy in uh, a quite interesting way. Yeah, I will just jump over. This is also a very nice project. Norman is a, is a tool where you can generate hand-drawn animations in virtual reality. Yeah, so as we are, I think, kind of running out of time, I will now introduce two examples.
in this field of uh, tectonic shift. So we have invited this year a lot of people. I think you know, for instance, um, Erico. Do you know Erico? <laughs> he knows. <laughs> yes. He was one of the top prize winners this year. Uh, and what we actually discussed was uh, with people uh, what is actually the impact of the pandemic. Uh, we invited uh, uh, studios and we talked about them. We also had this privilege. This is more a coincidence, but uh, Matthias Winkelmann is the last prime example that I will show to you. There is another Winkelmann that you probably may know, and that's uh, Mike Winkelmann. Do you know people? You know? No, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> that's good for me, so I can tell you a very interesting story. The coincidence is um, people, and we are talking about expanded animation. People, Mike Winkelmann, got very, very famous at the beginning of this year because uh, he sold an artwork on Christie's for almost $70 million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? You know the story? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> People. So what he actually did is uh, he started with this idea and he was famous before he was uh, was uh, um, um, uh, yeah I, I'll stop okay <laughs> this is an actual um, um, a current uh, um, uh, screenshot from his artwork uh, from his website so he has created 5308 every days and that's the idea so to Every day he is publishing uh, a new artwork on the internet since almost 40 years, 15 years. And this was the first one. I think it was, let me see, May 1st, 2007, I guess so. What it is, is a procedural animation, a selection of 3D primitives, a first rendering. And he came up with this idea, so to sort out new technologies. His favorite tool is uh, Cinema 4D. And he started to generate every day an image, learn new things. And it was more fun learning the tools, exploring new ways. And that was actually the idea. And we had this privilege to invite him in 2019. So he was almost famous because uh, he was one of these pioneers in the field of every day. So if you're thinking about doing an every day or starting an every day, you should uh, check out his website. So this is a short introduction just to get a feeling what who he is and how he, he his approach is. Let me see. Now it's, it would be fine. No. <laughs> okay. Mike Winkleman, no. uh, known no, to many probably as People. And Mike has worked with a variety of media, uh, including 3D graphics, short films, um, loops, mm -hmm. even virtual know. augmented it's reality. And he's probably better known for his everyday yeah, we'll practice that. of creating. If it's not working, but you see the images, yeah? Okay. <laughs> then I, I will I will Every just talk over. And so this is this is Mike. Unfortunately, you could not hear him, but he is not. So he's he was he's not an artist, a classical artist. Uh, he is just a guy, uh, very smart and doing every day since years and also um, um, yeah, uh, trying out things. And this was uh, uh, a very impressive presentation. So when he talked about his pieces and inspirations, and if you 
check out his website, you will see that sometimes he is doing uh, more uh, 2D um, uh, stuff with uh, um, 3D elements, and then he is all changing uh, his strategy. So he is exploring different visual styles. Just to give you a little bit of impression, what he's actually doing. Some are very outstanding. Abstract pieces, procedural animation, etc. Okay, so so this is an everyday, but this was more or less a performance. So he asked the audience, "So what should I do? Actually, uh, I have a database of objects. Uh, should I pick uh, an image of uh, a famous politician, or should I just pick this one?" So this is more an interaction with a lot of people. And of course, uh, the community was also commenting on every days and he reflected on them. Sometimes it's um, an image with Trump or another politician. And this is quite interesting. What do you see here? Okay, this is a, um, not real time, but then he had I think 20 minutes interaction with the audience. And after this, uh, he started to think about, okay, we are going to the deep space. So in this case, it's just the next slide. So then we had uh, uh, people at deep space and he evolved or he improved uh, this uh, 20 minute approach. Then he came up with this idea so this is a kind of the final image. So you still see, see here these characters at the beginning. And then it's, I think, two hours. The everyday is ready to be published on his social media account. Here you see the deep space with a collage of a lot of images in 2019. And that's the image that Christie's sold for almost $70 million. And NFT, and this was kind of a, a very weird story for people because he was doing 40 years every day and from one day to the other, he was a very, very famous artist since this happened actually. 14 years every day, that's the story. Matthias Winkelmann came up with an idea similar to every day, but he developed uh, a social media influencer, a social media bot. So this is an algorithm and program, a software that is generating um, images on the basis of some uh, artistic rules. And uh, there is also this task that every day there is an outcome and this outcome is on Instagram. So Rachel is not real is the first 3D design bot that is publishing every day since a couple of years. creating a new image that is based on very simple design techniques. 
variety of shapes and colors to choose from, then she basically generates a meaningful name to the image that was just created and then uses a custom Python script to upload the image to Instagram automatically. Matthias Winkelmann also published um, a collage of 5,000 images reflecting, of course, people's uh, every days. But this is my, my uh, conclusion. So thinking about what does it mean to be human uh, in, this, uh, in this upcoming uh, years, thinking about new tools, you probably heard about uh, new Photoshop art, artificial intelligence features or NVIDIA tools that are generating uh, images based on uh, some lines. And this is a, a quite interesting um, discussion that uh, we came up with this topic, tectonic shift. And uh, keep in mind, so 14 years of every day is compared to uh, a bot that is doing 5,000 images just in a couple of seconds. It's a different story, it's a different approach, and it's a different uh, outcome, so to speak. So if you are interested in, uh, you have this possibility to uh, see all the these discussions uh, from its beginning. So we have a YouTube channel, Expanded Animation, where you have this possibility to, to listen to most of the presentations. There is also a website, Ars Electronica, with a much bigger archive, the Ars Electronica archive, where you can check out uh, the pioneers in the 80s to current uh, artistic approaches. Here is the website, but you, Google will help you to find it, Ars Electronica archive, and that's, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you.